Welcome back everybody. So, a new innovation is coming to gaming. It is not particularly innovation that is going to be good for us. There's a potential future where it could be, but that's almost certainly not the future that's going to come to pass. The major platforms are basically working out how to more deeply monetize games. And it's quite interesting because a lot of game engines like already have all of this like built into them. I think the difference, though, is we're seeing, well, in this case, Sony and Microsoft both go in this direction for free-to-play titles. Yeah, I think the important thing is that they're actually going to uh, kind of try to get as much profit from it themselves. Yeah. And also try to, like, obviously that's the case. If you build a platform, you build a system, and then you get everyone else to use it, then you get to, like they already do with platforms, you get to go, oh, yeah, we'll take a nice little cut of everything you make on this. Excellent. Yeah. Great deal. And it's that troublesome thing where I don't want to be playing Halo Infinite in the middle of a multiplayer map and just see Mountain Dew or whatever advertising partner that they will have for, say, a double XP coupon. You know, yeah. I don't want to have that sort of thing going on. And it seems like that's the sort of thing that could end up going on. Yep, yeah, that's that is, um, according to reports from Business Insider, both of those platforms absolutely see that being the future. Just, oh, yep, yeah, you're playing video games. Here's some advertisements. Yeah, so apparently what's going on here is Microsoft are in the midst of building an advertising program to sell ads that will show up in free-to-play Xbox games. So there's that, and then Sony are apparently also testing a program themselves. Yeah. Now, uh, Business Insider has heard Microsoft say they want to work with select brands and that they're trying to be careful not to irritate players with this sort of thing. Now, I feel like, you know, if I see... Tino's pizza rolls inside Halo, that's going to be a significant disruption. That's not going to be the sort of thing that I want at all. So yeah. I very much question how they do this. Is it planned to be like actual in-game integration? Is it loading screen banners? You think about all the places in a video game that could be considered ad inventory, and it could start to get a bit spooky. Yeah, because almost certainly we already see this in a couple different games where you see uh, like menu stuff. You see many advertisements. Often they're for the same like uh, the same publisher, or sometimes the same developer going, "Go, hey, our new games on this," and you see it in the thing, and it's like, "Okay, that's that's fine," because this isn't in-game gameplay. So that might be like the the one way they'll like avoid irritating users is by putting it in loading screens. But you do have to remember that we're ostensibly we're like fully in next gen, where loading screens, you know, for example, like uh, Forbidden West has to have a setting which is, you know you have to go into the menu to turn on that the loading screens stay on enough for you to see the tips. Yeah. So if you can't see, if you can't read a loading screen tip, then the advertising will be subliminal as opposed to here's an actual advertisement you get to look at and see. You, you'll flash an image at most. So then you have to go, well, most time is spent in the game. So that's where you ostensibly have to advertise for an advertising partner to go, oh yeah, well, we need people to see this stuff. Yeah. And then when it comes to like select brands, it's like, that might be just, okay, we're not going to show... We're going to try to make sure people don't see stuff they don't want. Like, we're not going to have women's razors advertised to, like, users that we know are, like, in the male demographic, stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so they'll have and, all of yeah. the demographic selection stuff. Yeah, so and maybe stuff like, okay, we'll be intelligent and not show them, like, brands that they have problems with. Which, as an example, I mean, imagine seeing, like, a bunch of, uh, like, Tencent adverts in a game. A lot of people might be a little bit uh, put off by that for whatever reason. And you're like, okay, well, maybe that's it, but... At the end of the day, there will just be advertisements in video games still. Yeah. Now, per the report into Sony, they're considering basically wanting to do it in a way where it just feels integrated. So that would be billboards yeah. in a game level, which, I mean, I even remember from playing Battlefield 2142. Indeed. Um, things like a sports stadium and a sports game. Yeah. Right? Those so makes sense completely. Yeah. It's like those make sense. And it's just like how FIFA Ultimate Team is acceptable mm. to some of the sports audience because they're used to football cards. Well, they are used to advertisements in sports stadiums therefore why not make use of yeah. that inventory that's going there's, to be the way that they will see it and i think there, there's gradations of disruption it will feel the most natural in a sports game the least natural in the middle of a halo map because i'm fairly sure mountain dew doesn't exist in the 2500s yeah, that, that's exactly where they're going to run into problems, where it's like, as soon as those games get outside the boundaries of modern day or sports, then you'll just be like, okay, well, this is nonsensical, and I don't like the game, I feel it, like, not, you know, it's the whole point of games being escapism, even games that are, you know, kind of ostensibly gameplay focused and stuff, like, oh, yeah, I'm here to do this, but then you see an app, you're like, oh, 
yeah, you see an advert for adver, advert for Purcell, and you're like, oh yeah, shit, I I need to do my laundry this like later on today. You're like, well, now I'm not in the game. That's a pretty niche example, but you could completely see it happening, and I think that's the that's yeah. the, the problem we'll face. Like, so sort of thing. These have existed before. Twenty one forty two had yeah. it. Graw two, I forgot about that. Yep. Uh, need for Speed, Burnout, they've had them, but this is a little bit different. Yeah. This is going to be more of like you know an SDK, like an actual platform that's mm -hmm. going to make the integration of this for developers like way easier. So yeah. basically, you know, you could use Unity ads, you could use Google ads, say in your mobile game. Mm -hmm. If you're on Xbox, you use Microsoft ads, Sony, Sony ads. It's just building the ad platform. Yeah, yeah. You basically you put a billboard in the game, and then whenever that game loads for that day goes to the server and goes, what ad am I showing today? Oh, this one? Okay, sure. And then you could likely even get uh, like metrics back, stuff like an analytics, just like, oh yeah, how long did the, you know, did the person look at this? If it's like a first person game, like, did they actually look at the ad, like with in, in scope to read it or anything like that? So there's a lot of like, I think kind of cool and interesting things they can do from a tech perspective. But I think as most people watching this video, you're just gonna go, well, I don't want that. And that's, a, that's, that's the unfortunate part for sure. Yeah, yeah, fundamentally. I mean, here's even, like, Battlefield, you know? Adrenaline inside. Pepsi. Just, yep. just Pepsi. There's a Titan, there's a Pepsi. <laughs> yep. That feels bad. Yeah, I think the, the worst the worst is almost definitely that, the, like, uh, Obama example. I think that was Need for Speed and Burnout, where, like, political campaigns, no matter what it is in your game, is like, that's, that's not going to feel good at all. Like, no, absolutely not, yeah. Well, I'll probably yeah. avoid that, of course, but... I suppose with all of that being more inflammatory now, maybe as platforms they would realize that could be a little bit more playing with yeah, fire. For sure. Um, but overall, it's just, this is not great stuff. We kind of went away from this mm -hmm. for a period of time. So I suppose maybe in just trying to more deeply monetize things, then maybe they feel like, okay, we've got so much of what we can get via these means of monetization. Let's now try to move into this as well. Indeed. Because why not have as many different streams of revenue as possible? Absolutely. So I guess the, the worry here is, you know, is this going to be uh, the future? Slowly but surely, almost certainly yes. Because at the Great. Yeah, at the very top of this video, <laughs> there are two existing services that actually already do this in like mobile games and stuff. And they have it in that really, really kind of aggressive way of like it, it doesn't look like it's even like baked in. It's like the viewport of this game is designed for this to be this billboard to be right in your screen. And then the adverse design to be completely like just there in, you know, taking up a substantial portion of your vision at all times with that, especially that racing game example, it is really brutal. You're just driving along and there's, there's Mountain Dew in your face. Yeah. That's, that's the stuff that's completely vile, but that's what like this company, uh, Rapid Fire and Anzu actually have done. And I noticed looking at Anzu, they have a bunch of big name strategic partners actually attached to the website and stuff. And that includes Ubisoft, Xbox, uh, Samsung, Vodafone, in terms of like the mobile and the advertising side of stuff. They've got Mondelay International for, you know, obviously food advertising and stuff like that. I just kind of go, well, that's Ubisoft and Xbox. So if they're in their hat into this ring with this company, maybe there are people like they're looking at, okay, Andrew, how do you do it? Can we do it better? Can we do it the same? Can we like leverage your tech, something like that? But then I noticed that they are actually, um, I don't think he's still with them. But Ruben Dehuk, who's uh, the ex-VP of, I think, business management for Activision Blizzard, and then the current head of business management, business management and partner strategy at PlayStation, was a strategic advisor for them. Mm -hmm. So you can see how they definitely have like that, hey, big publishers, we can make you more money from your existing games, and they're actually listening. And obviously now they have plans in their own, which I don't know about the Microsoft one, but I know Business Insider said that uh, Sony have been planning this for at least 18 months. And they were kind of going, you know, that links back to around the time the pandemic really started and the, like, a lot of new people were coming into games. And I imagine a lot of those new people weren't as monetizable as people who are already in the gaming ego ecosystem, ego culture. So that's very interesting. Yeah, I guess as well. I'll, it's not even fair to just say Sony because obviously mm. Halo is now a live service as well. But yeah. we know Sony are pushing to have more free-to-play live services. Ten of them in the next couple of years. Yeah. From a business perspective, it does make a lot of sense. It's yep. just, you know, users spending a lot of time in your platform. They now both have Game Pass-like product offerings. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose it makes sense that they're both looking into this. And they are both probably happy enough to do this kind of with each other at the same time. Yeah, it means that nobody ends up looking like the clear villain because the whole industry is doing it. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, this is not stealing audience from other people. It's just about more deeply monetizing the audience they've already got. Now, they could yeah. also say it's also about driving, you know, value for developers on our platform. Which but is ultimately, also, yeah. like some of that's true. But ultimately, we 
we do know well why a platform will do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, It is uh, according to Business Insider, that's one of the things Xbox like internally talk about, going, okay, we want to provide more value for uh, developers. We want to have this really good system so FTP de or F2P devs can go, okay, if we put our game on Xbox, then we're, we, if we have like so many players, we'll get so much revenue from advertisements. And obviously that sounds good to a developer because you're like, okay, well, you can't really avoid ads. It's like, is advertising to players worse than ring money out of them through monetization and then you come to the point you're like well this is you know this is at least advertisers paying some portion of a game's uh, like revenue and some portion of a game's bill as opposed to them you know tightening the screws on players yeah which also kind of comes to me with a little bit of an extra thing which is this is de trying to deeply monetize players but it's not monetizing players directly which may mean that there's some research in them going we have kind of capped out how much we can you know drain players in terms of value for games which i think is kind of maybe a slightly hopeful message well, this is a going shit we can't squeeze any more money out of them so it's all because then i think well what happens when you know even being inspired by youtube premium they do an offering yeah. where if you have game pass or if you have um the the new version of ps plus yeah. that then perhaps you don't get these advertisements i'm not saying that's a plan they've got no but it certainly will feel weird if you're paying for subscription service for either of these companies because they have similar offerings, but then you have to pay for, you know, you have to, I mean, pay in terms of frustration and that you also have to see ads because then that's not like the YouTube premium mm -hmm. deal. And even we look at things going on in other parts of well, similar industries, you look at Netflix, they're looking into offering a paid, but then with also with advertisements tier. Mm -hmm. uh, so lower price of entry, still a subscription, bought advertisements which mm. does feel kind of scummy so i i feel like it's you know they're trying to take as much ground and now it's about consolidation and optimizing that business model now certainly for some developers mm -hmm. this will be quite a useful feature that will probably earn them a, a fair little bit for sure um for sure it would be interesting like will publishers be able to do this for games will it be just limited to external brands one example is in the mobile space. Cross advertising of mobile titles is like the main thing that seems to drive a hell of a lot of revenue mm -hmm. in mobile because it's just like links to another game in the app store to then download so you can, you know, buy their silly purchases. Yeah. Um, whereas just the idea of like a Coke banner mm. seems like harder to track. So, I, you know, I, I just kind of wonder how that's going to end up feeling, what kind of metrics... Um, you know, what, what things will be measured and managed, I suppose. The, the bit of my head that, because obviously with YouTube and everything, like we yeah. do kind of interact with the advertisement model, um, that's the bit of my head that kind of gets tingled by this. Yeah, is there going to start, is there going to suddenly be like, you know, if you, if you, if you shoot the banner, then it'll open the web page in like a browser oh, no. at the side of your screen. <laughs> that was, <laughs> just, oh, you just missed someone now to watch an ad. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's weird because like on YouTube, the, the deal is basically... It's supported with advertisements. Mm -hmm. If you get YouTube Premium, then your view... Like, by the way, if you have YouTube Premium, like, uh, your view of our content is worth more than somebody watching our content with an ad. Like, Premium is, yeah, substantially, like, important for that. That is 95% that of why I have Premium. Because it's like, I know when I'm watching stuff, people get stuff for it, unlike the Adblock model, and that's a case of... I wouldn't feel the same about this model because I don't think developer, you know, Kind of like the YouTubers are smaller creators kind of stuff, as opposed to yeah. the developers are big developers. They have money. They're making products. So, yeah, so that's the different. thing then. As a user, what are you getting in return for seeing these advertisements? It's and going it's to kind of seem, like nothing. It, yeah. yeah, it seems like nothing. Yep. Um, so, <sighs> kind of rough. I feel like the only way that they could do this is by maybe some strategic partnerships with games that are on their subscription models. Yeah. such that there is a kickback for whatever, you know, perks or however it is uh, in a free-to-play game that makes, you know, this free-to-play game more sticky if someone is on Game Pass. So yeah. that developer gets a kickback. Um, and then the user with the subscription pass doesn't see the advertisements. But all of this is just going into the realms of deeper monetization. I just don't, yeah. don't think that's what people want. I mean, you've already paid your, for your console. Uh, I mean, you, yeah. You're already probably paying a subscription service. Hmm. And in some cases, you know, you're... Well, it's just the idea, like... It, it's the most awkward with Halo, purely because 
it feels premium even though it's free to play yeah. and loads of people who are playing it free to play are kind of doing it through game pass because that's how they got the campaign so to speak mm -hmm. and that just makes it all feel funny at least on the microsoft side yeah i mean actually that subscriptions is an interesting point because you remember that xbox actually had a pr pretty substantial advantage over uh, PlayStation for a long time because you needed PS Plus to play free-to-play games on PSN for a long, long time. Yeah, They wound that back step by step, but now it's completely wound back so you can just play free-to-play games. So that's a good point of PS Plus now doing that would actually make it a relatively decent value sell. And to me, I'm just thinking about how many people are playing Warzone, how many people are playing Apex, yeah. how many people are playing Fortnite and not being monetized by those. And I'm sure, obviously, these platform holders have access to that data and are looking at it and going, they bought our console and they're not giving us any money for being on our platform. Shit. I mean, obviously a lot of monetization is happening there, but where it's not, they're probably going, well, we need to sort this problem yeah. out. Or that's a, you know, that's a, that's a gold mine of untapped resources. If there's ads, they can make money from the ads. Yep. If the subscription means you don't see ads, they make money from the subscription. It's a pretty good win-win. Absolutely. So I suppose none of this is happening just yet. It's something mm. that is actively being looked into. So be on the lookout for it. Yep, and um, absolutely. I don't, yep. re I don't like how this feels at all. No, I mean, that's the thing where obviously it, we didn't really talk too much about the actual impact of what this would be like in your free-to-play games. And it's like, of course, for multiplayer stuff, you're like, yeah, I see, an, I see a banner on advert. That's going to be annoying. But it's like, when does that, when, when is that the thin end of the wedge for advertisements in games? When yeah. do they start to go, mm, maybe we could put ads in our free trials of single-player games? You know, what's a single-player free-to-play game? I know there aren't really many of those in that front, but like, how far does that go and how much does it end up being, sorry, much like uh, TV where you can't actually get engaged with a show because you're seeing an ad every 15 seconds and that's why the Netflix model was so enjoyed by people. What is that going to come for games eventually because the advertising market is just too big to ignore? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So look, that's basically the situation. Let us know uh, what you think about this. I mean, hey, do you play a free-to-play game that already has advertisements uh, like in it on, on PC or something? Uh, let us know. But anyway, glad that we're now all aware of this so we can kind of be on the lookout for it. I think that's really it for today. So uh, we will indeed see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in and uh, goodbye.